Welcome everybody. How's everyone doing today? Today we're going to talk about the exponential distribution. All right. So I'm going to start with a couple of examples of where the exponential distribution would be appropriate. All right. First one would be the amount of time until an earthquake occurs. Second one is length in minutes of long distance business calls. Next would be the amount of time in months. A car battery lasts. The fourth is pretty basic, just wait time for an elevator. So why don't you pause the video, think about these four examples, and we'll try to tie them all together in just a minute. All right. So what do all four of these examples have in common? They all are concerned about the amount of time until an event occurs. So that's what we can talk about with the exponential distribution. We can say the exponential distribution is concerned with the amount of time until a specific event occurs. All right, so, and that's the way to tie things together. So if you have a problem where you're talking about the probability of time until the next earthquake occurs, you're talking about the exponential distribution. Here is my formula. So f of x equals one over mu, which is one over our average, e to the negative x over mu. All right, there are some alternate versions of this formula. I'll give you the one I like. So I can say or use lambda just like uh, in the Poisson. E to the negative lambda times x where Lambda equals one over mu. And for our formula for variance is one over lambda squared. All right, so we don't necessarily need a formula for mu, our average, because we can use this one and solve it for mu. So if we were to solve that for mu, we can multiply both sides times u, divide both sides times lambda. We see that mu equals one over lambda. Does that make sense? 
good. Let's jump right into one or two examples. All right, so here's our first example. On average, a computer part lasts 10 years. The length of time the computer part lasts is exponentially distributed. A, so there's gonna be an A, a B, a C. A, what is the probability the part lasts more than seven years? All right, so what are we gonna look at? We're gonna look at the probability. Actually, you know what, I'll change the color. A little contrast, never hurt. I want to know the probability that X is greater than seven. All right. So how can I figure that out? Well, I can say if I want to know the probability of X being greater than seven, I can say I want to know one minus the probability that X is less than or equal to seven. All right. If I want to know the probability that X is less than seven, that's going to equal one minus the probability of X greater than seven. All right. So I'm going to try to explain this, but it's going to be interesting. All right. All right. So we're looking at this particular problem. So I have one minus one minus probability that X is less than or equal to seven. So I go one minus one, that's zero. So I wind up with negative e to the negative 0 0.1 to the seventh. And I'm referring to this formula up here where lambda is one over mu. And if our computer part lasts on average 10 years, that means mu equals 10 years. So lambda is 1 tenth. So that's where I got my 0.1 from. So what I'd like you to do is run this through your calculator. And I'll give you the answer in just a minute. Okay, answer should be 0 0.4966. That's what I got. All right, and of course, I said mu equal 10, lambda equals 1 tenth, or 0 0.1, and x equals 7 in my formula. That's where I got my numbers from. All right. All right, so part B says, on average, how long would five computer parts last if they were used one after another? Meaning you used one, it broke, use the next one, it broke, use the next one, it broke. So, if the average or mu is 10 years, so we could say on average, a part's gonna last about 10 years. Could last a little more, could last a little less. But overall, 10 years is a a good estimate. If I have few five parts that I'm using back to back, why don't I just use my best estimate of 10 years per part and I could say that the parts will last 50 years. Now are they going to last exactly 50 years? Probably not. Maybe 49, maybe 47, maybe 52, maybe 53. I don't know, but it's a good guess. And that's all they're asking for is on average, how long would they last? All right, so let's go to C. 80% of 
of the computer parts last at most how long? All right, so in order to find this, we need to find the 80th, 80th percentile. So why don't you pause the video, uh, take a moment to think about it, and we'll do it together on the back end. All right, so to account for the 80th percentile, we have to go back to our CDF. So that would be one minus e to the negative 0 0.1 times x and we have to say that equals 0 0.8 that's the amount of area that we want to include to the left all right so why don't you guys pause the video try to run this equation a little bit hint you'll have to use natural log we'll do it on the back end All right, hopefully you were able to do some algebra on this. I'm gonna subtract one from both sides. I get negative e to the negative 0 0.1 times x equals 0 0.8 minus one. And, sorry, excuse me. I'll write that a little bit better, negative e. Now I'm going to multiply through by negative 1, and I get e to the negative 0.1x equals 1 minus 0 0.8. And I'm going to keep working that down. I'm going to do the natural log of both sides. So I have the negative 0 0.1 times x ln of e equals the ln of 1 minus 0 0.8. The ln of E is 1, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 0 0.1. And I wind up with x equals the ln of 1 minus 0 0.8 over negative 0 0.1. And why don't you take a moment to run this through the calculator and give me about what it equals. All right, if you ran it through the calculator, hopefully properly, you got about 16.1 years. So that would be how long 80% of this com particular computer parts would last. The last component of this problem Part D asks you to find the probability of some that the probability is in between nine and eleven. So I have all right, so I have the probability at x is less than 11 minus the probability that x is less than 9, which basically on our graph, if I were to make a graph, right, and here's 11 and here's 9, what we're looking at is we're looking at the area, right? So there is less than nine, right? And I'll use a different color. Here is less than 11. So really what I want is I want the highlighted portion, okay? And the way to get the highlighted portion is to take the blue marks and subtract off the green marks. And that's essentially what I'm doing. So let's get back to it. All right, we talked about probability of x less than a number. So that would be one minus e to the negative 0 0.1. 
right? There's our CDF up to 11 minus 1 minus e to the negative 0 0.1 to the ninth power. And when I evaluate, I get 0 0.6671 minus 0 0.5934 and when I do the subtraction I get 0 0.0737 all right so it's kind of a short explanation but the probability that the part will last between 9 and 11 years pretty low 0 0.0737 All right, so let's move on to the second example. All right, a device consists of two electrical components, A and B. The lifespans of A and B are both exponentially distributed with expected lifespans of five years and 10 years, respectively. The device works as long as both components work. What is the expected lifespan of the device? All right, so we're basically looking at our lambda for part A is one fifth. Our lambda for part B is one tenth. And the lambda for the device equals the lambda for A plus the lambda for B, which would be one fifth plus one tenth. Why don't you pause the video and do the addition? All right, glad you're back. I simplified it to three tenths, which is the lambda for the device. So our average is also equal to the expected value, which would be Bring our lambda right, lambda to negative one. So if we did the reciprocal of our lambda, I got 3.3 years. All right, so that's it for today. I had one long example, one relatively short one. Uh, why don't you watch the video a couple more times and uh, I'll see you guys in class, thanks.